CQVX, CQVX, CQVX. This is Havana calling. CQVX, CQVX, CQVX. This is Radio Havana calling all shortwave listeners and radio amateurs. Welcome to... VXers Unlimited, Radio Havana's weekly feature dedicated to the fascinating world of radio communications. Hola, mis amigos radio aficionados all around the world who are now listening to the limited of the week edition of VXers Unlimited, your favorite radio hobby program. I'm your host, Arnaldo Arnie Coro, and here's item one of today's show. A single little sunspot active region traveling across the solar disk right now. Monday UTC day, the sunspot number was 20, and for the near future, there are no signs of new solar active regions rotating into view. The CQ magazine W2X, the prefixes contest, an event that usually brings a lot of rare call signs to the airwaves for the weekend. At CO2KK, my amateur radio station, I decided to run a test using just one watt of single sideband voice on the 15 meters or 21 megahertz amateur band. I didn't call CQ. Instead of my approach was to reply to the high power stations from South America that were on the air on Sunday afternoon local time, each one of them calling CQ contest. The kilo kilo call sign on my station proved once again how good it is to make very weak signals heard. I was able to work stations in Uruguay, Chile, and Brazil, and also in Argentina, after many, and I mean many, repeats of the first part of my call sign. The very good operators will ask, the Kilo Kilo station again, please, Kilo Kilo again. But when I came back to them with the Charlie Oscar II part of my call, it wasn't easy at all. Just three stations were able to make up the complete call and receive the serial number required as part of the contest exchange for the WPX event. So here is one bit of advice if you, as a radio amateur, are planning to request a new call sign. That's a good idea if yours is very complicated and not easy on the air. Test your voice, as I did with the computer audio analysis spectrogram in display, and try to ask your telecommunications administration for a call sign that will maximize peak power output for your particular voice frequency range, as I did. At CO2KK, the Kilo Kilo, Charlie Oscar 2, Kilo Kilo works wonderfully well as proved again during the past weekend WPX contest. One watt peak envelope power and a wire antenna, very similar to the popular G5 RV, operating on the 15 meters or 21 megahertz amateur band, made possible the three very marginal but nevertheless complete two-way contest exchanges. Now let me add that Sunday afternoon the high frequency propagation conditions on the 10 meters band here in Havana were totally close, nothing, not a single signal heard. On 20 meters, much more activity was monitored, but never like previous year's contest, something that was due to the very low solar flux count for several days previous to the contest, even two weeks with zero sunspots. Item two, the Q and CW group of amateur radio operators is promoting a project that will help both beginners and experts operate on CW Morse code radio telegraphy mode using a simple low power transmitter that can be homebrewed. Two versions of the low power rigs are now in the early design stages, one using all solid state devices recycled from retired computers, CRT monitors and TV sets, and the other is a hybrid, a hybrid transmitter using low power transistors and a pair of also recycled vacuum tubes operating as the driver and final radio frequency amplifier stages. But have Charlie Oscar 3, Juliet Kilo, Charlie Oscar 3, Juliet Kilo is the secretary of the Cuban CW group, wrote an email to me explaining that the first part of the project aims, first of all, at building a rugged, reliable power supply for both transmitters. More radio hub related information coming direct and from the source in a few seconds after a short break for station ID. I'm your host, Arnie Coro, Charlie Oscar 2, Kilo Kilo, in sunny, beautiful La Habana, Cuba. Enjoy wonderful early spring weather. Amigos, this is Radio Havana Q, where the name of the show is The Access Unlimited, and here is now more Radio Hub related information coming to you. A few days ago, I decided to dismantle an old hybrid amateur radio transceiver that had broken down many, many times lately, making each time more and more difficult to repair it. 
it was not an easy decision, but when I started to take the rig apart, it proved to be the correct thing to do. When after testing, the first 10 electrolytic capacitors removed from the Kenwood TSA-20S using an equivalent series resistance meter, they all proved to be totally out of the minimum possible parameters. Attempting to revive that rig without a supply of high-quality, fully tested electrolytic capacitors for both the high-voltage and low-voltage power supplies would be simply an impossible task. And it will also require a tremendous amount of time to do the job. Another finding that came out during the first steps of the dismantling process was related to the type of wrap-around solderless connections used by Kenwood. That, in my opinion, was a very poor choice by the designers. The work to restore it was put down and was totally removed. The rear door assembly and the big power transformer will soon be used for other homebrew projects. All the small parts will need to be removed by first extracting printed circuit boards, where valuable parts like the single sideband filter and many quartz crystals can be recovered for later recycling. Needless to say, the Kenwood TS-820S had provided a useful service life of several decades that could have extended furthermore if a different method of assembly had been used. And before I forget, the wall frequency ground dispatch on the two main power tubes power amplifier were also neatly removed and could be used for a single sideband rig, making good use of the power supply built using the big transformer also recovered from the now defunct transceiver. Item 4, ask Annie, la numero uno, the most popular section of the Access on Liberty is now on the air, answering today a question sent by listener Mario from Milan, Italy. Amigo Mario wants to hear my opinion about the possibility of building a self-excited power oscillator for CW that used the Hartley Hall circuit. Well, Amigo Mario, all I can say is that it can be done, but it does require the use of some hard-to-find parts, like white space air variable capacitors, dials, that are essential to achieve a very stable frequency of stability and you will also need a very, very stable regulated, fully regulated power supply to feed the power oscillator. Remember, this is a direct feed from the oscillator to the antenna. My Italian friend Chris Gregorio has built a prototype, Hartley Hall single stage power oscillator, but sounds very good in the air and doesn't do it at all. I remember many years ago building a similar CW rig using a single triode connected 807 type tetro tube fed from a professional high voltage regulated power supply that was given to me as a present. It provided about 15 watts output on the 40 meters band and was really stable. Key, by the way, was excellent and no chirp was heard from that rig. Using an also homebrew regenerative receiver, the 807 triode connected power oscillator made possible making some very nice air contacts. But I must add that this happened, unfortunately, many, many years ago during solar cycles 20 and 21 that were much more active than the present very weak solar cycle, the weakest in 200 years. Item 5, next April the 9th, Radio Havana Cuba will be changing to the A17 transmission schedule and very few changes are expected to take place. The reason for not having to change many frequencies has to do with the very low solar activity expected for this season that starts during the spring and comes to an end during October. You can send your single reports and comments about our shortwave broadcast to inforhc at inet.cu. Again, Info RHC, India, November, Foxtrot, Oscar, Romeo, Hotel Charlie. Info RHC at ENET, Echo, November, Echo Tango, ENET.CU.CharlieUniform. And do not forget to include details of the program search so that we may verify your reception reports with a nice QSL. And now, amigos, just at the end of the program, something new. The general background radio frequency noise levels within the frequency range from 3 to 30 megahertz has increased dramatically during the past five years whenever measurements made five years ago were available for comparison. The results of those carefully done band scans measuring the background noise demonstrate that services that once were capable of providing good quality coverage, like the AM medium wave broadcast band, have become, at some urban locations, now almost useless, even when the stations are using high power transmitters. And also that the FM broadcast band is also suffering from many electromagnetic incompatibility problems that reduce the service area of many stations in a significant way. And now, just at the end of the show, here is Arnie Corp's The Access Unlimited High Frequency Propagation Update and Forecast for you. Expect poor to very poor propagation conditions during the next two days due to the effects of a high-speed solar wind stream coming from a large-sized coronal hole. All I can recommend is to monitor the lower frequencies for possible propagation anomalies that may bring some rare stations to your radios. 
Send your senior reports and comments via airmail to Arnie Coro. Your last name, Charlie, Oscar, Romeo, Oscar, Infonetics, Arnie Coro, Radio Havana, Cuba, Havana, Cuba. And use our primary email address, info, rhc, at inet.cu. Have to see you all at the weekend edition of the Access Unlimited on the air next Sunday and Monday UPC days. And that's all for today. This is Arnie Coro, Radio Amateur CO2KK, your host here at Radio Havana's TXS Unlimited, calling 73 and very good DX.